Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin to God the Father, that we may receive his forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In his mercy, Almighty God has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. never-ending presence, that we may bear witness to your grace until the day we celebrate with all the saints around your throne. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And invite the children to come for the children's message.
Hi. Hi, everyone watching and participating at, at home. Uh, so today is, uh, today is obviously Tuesday, and we're recording the service for Sunday. And uh, the theme for this, sun, this service is the ascension of Jesus. Do you know what ascension means? Huh? No? You know what, you know what to de descend means? To descend means to go down. To ascend means to go up. Ascension is about Jesus going, returning to, to heaven after his resurrection. And normally Ascension Day is, uh, would be this Thursday, but under the circumstances we're celebrating Ascension today and, and on Sunday. And uh, when Jesus, after his resurrection, was meeting with the disciples, they were asking him all kinds of questions and he said, wait, wait here in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will have power. And the Holy Spirit gives the, gave the disciples power to tell others about Jesus. And all of a sudden, Jesus was, and Jesus was taken up into heaven. Now, when you hear this story from the Bible, you think, well, of course Jesus went to heaven. We all go to heaven when we die. But this is special because you know that the Jesus who went up into heaven was not just his spirit, but the body of Jesus were transformed and taken up to heaven. So even today, Jesus still has the marks of the crucifixion in his, in his hands and in his feet and the spear mark in his side. So always and forever, Jesus stands before God as a constant reminder and proclamation that he died for us forever. He stands there before God, not as, not as what he was before he became uh, the son of the Virgin Mary, but the human Jesus. And he, and he stands before the Father and he prays for us. He asks God for us to watch over us and to give us, give us the ability to serve him faithfully. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for Jesus who died and rose for us and ascended into heaven. Help me to believe in him and to trust him and tell others about him. Amen. Take your pick. <laughs> first lesson is from Acts 1. In the first book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 dead days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the time or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sights. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, whom you have been, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial is from Psalm 47. 
Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is all awesome, a great King over all the earth. He subdues people under Him, and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom He loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God is a King over all the nations. God sits on His holy throne. The princes of the people gather as the people of God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. The second lesson is from Ephesians chapter 1. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love for, toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your hearts enlightened, you may know what is the hope to come, which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and he has made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. God. Please stand if you're able for the gospel. The gospel is written in the 24th chapter of St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened up their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so that here so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. I think if you were to ask most people, what is the most important event in the life and work of Jesus, most people would almost, almost universally say the cross. It's suffering and death for us. And uh, we know that that servants of Christ, like the Apostle Paul, I determined, that, I determined, he says, to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. But St. Paul himself also reminds us that the crucifixion of Jesus is part of an, uh, an entire process, if you will, of the saving and redeeming work of God in Christ. So there's a sense in which you could say that if Jesus himself was not the incarnate Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, then his suffering and death for us was tragic, but uh, could accomplish nothing on our behalf. 
You could also argue, as St. Paul does in 1 Corinthians 15 and elsewhere, that if Christ died for us and was not raised from the dead, then, then death has won and we are still in our sins and our faith is, 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 is pointless. Our faith is empty, futile. But then you also then are led to the question that how significant is the ascension of Jesus to God's saving plan? He was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. It was certainly important enough that the, the, the church councils and the leaders of the early church who fashioned the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene, Nicene Creed uh, included that statement, we believe in, in the ascension of our Lord, our Lord Jesus. But what happened? Why is it important that Jesus was raised from the dead? Most Protestant churches these days have pretty much forgotten the ascension of Jesus, at least, at least in terms of, of uh, celebration of worship. But in many parts of Christ, the Christian faith, it's, not, it's the exact opposite. In, in, in some churches, like the Roman Catholic Church, it is one of the mandatory feast days. I recently read a story by a professor at a seminary in Kentucky who out with, with his wife and another couple going to this remote uh, old Mennonite community in, in Kentucky. And they went to this one shop that, that they had looked, so looked forward to going to, uh, homemade jams and jellies and foods and crafts and all that. And uh, it happened to be Ascension Day, and there was a sign on the, day, on the, sign on the store that says, Closed for Ascension Day. Why is it so important? Why is it so important to be required among, among some of our brothers and sisters and essential enough that groups of people would be closed? I want you to think for a minute about what happened to Jesus. We know that he appeared for 40 days after his resurrection. He showed, he showed his crucified body to the disciples. He said, come, put your finger here, touch it, me and see does a, uh, does a ghost have flesh and bones like I do? Jesus even ate in the presence of his the disciples. The resurrected Jesus ate in front of his disciples to demonstrate to them that he was not a spirit, he was not a ghost, he was the Jesus that they had known for two to three years. As I was, as I was telling Savannah and Marshall and, and all of you who are who are participating online. When, when, when Jesus ascended into heaven, it wasn't just to, to get Jesus off the stage so now that they make room for the Holy Spirit. The ascension of Jesus to the right hand of God was his enthronement as, as Lord of the world. He sits at the right hand of the Father, a symbolic, metaphorical, uh, reference to Jesus' rule and reign. He sits at God's right hand forever as the incarnate, crucified Jesus. So Jesus is for eternity in heaven, interceding for us, not just by his own, his own communication with the Father, but by the fact that he took his suffering and his death to heaven, to heaven with him. Now, I think, I believe that if we, if we got, uh, uh, if we reclaim the significance of the ascension that the early Christians have our lives, our prayer lives, our worship lives, our serving, our, our mission, our evangelism, our, fellow, our fellowship, our living day to day, especially in, in the crisis that we've been living in over the past two, three months and the crisis that we will continue to try to find ways to live in. What does it mean that Jesus Christ, the crucified, risen, and ascended Jesus, is Lord? What does it mean? What does it mean for our lives uh, as believers? When you turn to the New Testament, um, I was surprised one time to discover that the most often quoted verse from the Old Testament by the New Testament writers is not what you would think. 
We might think something from Isaiah, from the suffering servant, or we might think maybe from one other prophet or, or what. It is Psalm 110, verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. That verse the early Christians took to be referring to Jesus' ascension into heaven. Jesus reigns at the right hand of God. The world that we live in is still broken and fallen, and we, it may not look at all like Jesus Christ is Lord when we look at the world, but for us who are in Christ, our lives rest assuredly and without reservation in, in the redeeming work of God in Christ. He died for us. He was raised for our justification. And he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. He reigns as Lord. And as St. Paul writes in Philippians, one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, lastly then, there is the aspect of the coming of the Holy Spirit. As I said, Jesus did not leave Jesus did not leave to make room for the Holy Spirit. Jesus left and ascended to heaven as Lord so that He and the Father could send the Holy Spirit upon His believers and that they would be empowered to be the church, to proclaim the Word of God, that the crucified, risen, and ascended Jesus, the incarnate Jesus, is Lord. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It is, it is my sincerest and, and, and most and firmest hope that as we struggle together in the coming days as we have been struggling that this message that Jesus Christ is Lord will empower us that it will give us strength that it will give us hope and that it will give us genuine peace to do all that God has called us to do in the midst of all of the struggles that that we are facing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand and let us join together in affirming the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together in singing verses 1, 2, and 6 of the head that once was crowned.
gathered together by the Holy Spirit, let us join in prayer for one another, for the church around the world, for our world, and for all those in need. I invite you to be seated as we pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you have blessed us with freedom to gather in your promised presence, to praise you and to bring our mutual prayers before you. And we ask you to enable us to continue to cherish these freedoms and to protect them so that they may continue for generations to come. Fulfill now, we pray, our desires and petitions according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen and ascended Jesus, we pray that you would continue to open our minds to understand the scriptures, and that you would fill us with the power of your spirit, so that we may proclaim to all that you are risen from the dead and ascended into heaven, where you reign as Lord and Savior of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the apostles many gifts with which to feed your flock. Bless all those who teach and preach your word with the power of your Holy Spirit, so that they may do so faithfully and truthfully, and in the power of your grace and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Faithful God, we thank you for calling us to yourself and making us your sons and daughters in Christ. We thank you for one another, for this Christian family. We pray for one another. We pray for our brothers and sisters at St. Peter's and for Pastor Bergman, for the North American Lutheran Church, our Bishop Dan and our Dean, Craig. We ask for God that you would empower your people in every place to serve you faithfully and sacrificially, proclaiming the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of those who cry out to you, those who are ill, those who are in pain, those who are alone, especially the many homebound who, who are lonely. We pray for those who are struggling with doubt or temptation, we pray for those who are wrestling and who turn to you for forgiveness. We pray also for those who mourn. We ask you, O oh God, to comfort, heal, strengthen, forgive, and bless them and all who turn to you. And that you would hear us as we offer them and ourselves to you in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear us and grant our requests according to your perfect will. But we ask them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
To receive this holy sacrament in a worthy manner, consider what we must now believe and do. We should believe that Jesus Christ himself is truly present in the bread and the wine as his words declare. This is my body, which is given for you. This is my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. We should also trust that Jesus Christ forgives our sin, as his words promise, for the forgiveness of sin. And finally, we should do as Christ commands when he says, Take, eat, drink, do this in remembrance of me. When we repent, believe these words and do as Christ commands, and we have rightly examined ourselves, and may worthily come to the Lord's table for the forgiveness of all our sin. Together, we should also give thanks to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for this great gift. We should love one another with a pure heart and with the whole Christian church take comfort and joy in Christ our Lord. May our Heavenly Father grant us His grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Almighty and Everlasting Father. For in Moses, the prophets, and the song, you showed your eternal purpose for your people and your love for the world. In Jesus the Christ, you fulfilled those promises. In his suffering and death, we see the consequences of our sin and the rejection of your love. Yet you raised Jesus from the tomb, in his resurrection, you invite us into the company of your eternal joy, and in his ascension to your right hand, you seal as complete his work among us. And so, with angels and archangels, and all the company of heaven, we join our voices to sing the hymn of your unending praise.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in this holy gift that we are living members of his body and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your Spirit, the Spirit of the crucified, risen, and ascended Jesus, to do the work which you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our ascending hymn is crown him with many crowns. We will sing verses 1, 4, and 5.